and uh, that should be actually we need to match the camera resolution that should be all the settings for that and let's just place that there uh, you'll see we get a very pixelated uh, version of the scene but that's how you want it and uh, these two will um, Z fight because they're on exactly the same uh, Y value of zero so what we want to do is uh, actually move the hmm actually let's before we decide let's actually just bring in a sphere and um, this will be a chrome ball if we just make another material uh, and go presets chrome just call this chrome and assign this and let's just rename it other materials this is the projector and this would be the chessboard and just make sure the chrome is there yes now um, before we do a test render let's set up some render settings we want to be rendering linearly uh, so linear linear um, we have some courses on uh, CG Tuts uh, on how to render linearly if you don't fully understand it um, let's make sure it's render cam and we need to be rendering with mental ray and we want some final gathering and the render settings, because we understood our footage isn't 1920 by 1080, it's 1960 by 1103, and that will depend on the distortion that you, uh, that how much distortion your camera had. But that's the exact dimensions of the uh, image plane that was rendered out of uh, PF track. So with that, um, let's go ahead and do a test render. Okay, and uh, we haven't set up our display properly. We need to go into color management, and because we're rendering linearly, uh, we need to render linearly and output in sRGB. So, as you can see, these two image planes are fighting. Uh, you can't really tell which one to put on top of the other. Um, what we will do is let's put the uh, chessboard underneath underneath the other one, underneath the ground plane, and um, this is here simply to um, get the reflection of the chess uh, chessboard. Uh, so this one uh, won't cast or receive shadows, uh, it will be primarily visible, and um, these are all good. Uh, the ground plane itself uh, won't cast shadows, it will receive shadows. The reason we don't want it to cast shadows is because because it's on top of the chessboard, it would cast a shadow, and uh, we would do want this primarily visible, uh, and all these. So now, if we re-render, this is what we get. Actually, we don't want it visible in reflections or refractions because we want just the chessboard to be doing that. And there we have the chessboard. Uh, we can see we're getting some weird stuff going on there, but now we have just the chessboard, which is nice. Okay, so now let's import our um, our image-based lighting. So we just come up to indirect lighting, image-based lighting, create, and let's uh, locate our, our source images, high dynamic range image. Um, this is one I took myself. It's not particularly great, um, but uh, it has plenty of ghosting and things like that, but it will do the job nicely. So if we um, just turn off the image plane so that we can actually see what we're doing with this image-based lighting, I'll just um, increase the far clip plane so that we can see the HDR lighting. And um, normally you can select it. Yes, there we go. By marquee, and we need to position this. It might be easier to do in the perspective so that's the NAS there, that blue light um, is here, so that will need to be rotated quite a bit. Now it's actually very hard to see because we're looking at the outside, so we can zoom in here and actually see the inside of the uh, image-based lighting. So that's the NAS there that needs to be around here somewhere. Now we'll notice it's uh, quite low, so what we'll want to do is uh, move it up a bit. 
in Y. And also the scale of 1300 is uh, a bit much. Let's go back to 100. Okay, that's uh, obviously not going to be enough. Let's make it 120. And I know uh, because I filmed this that the light is sort of coming from this direction. That seems about right. Let's just zoom in and see. There we have the NAS and there we have the, um, the doors. So this is looking pretty good. We can always adjust this later. Uh, but once we have the image-based lighting in the scene as well, uh, we don't actually get shadows from this. So let's create a, um, a directional light uh, that sort of is coming from the same light source. So if we just scale this up, um, and the scaling and position don't matter to the directional light, it's simply the rotation. And that looks like it's coming from the light source. Maybe the light needs to, actually we'll just, yes, that looks like it's coming from the light. I'll just scale this up a bit. It is a little bit small. Yep, that's good. And the settings for this uh, directional light, actually, um, I think I've gotten a bit messed up. The light is actually coming from this direction. And there's the NAS there, that's more like it. And uh, something that might be helpful is just if we come back to our uh, original footage and just, to, I'm currently on frame one, so we can sort of match it up a little bit. So the NAS was a bit higher, sort of looked like we could see a bit more in the scene. So we can see the NAS, we can see the posters and uh, the doors are over there. And uh, this light here will have to just uh, even out the rotation. Let's get it to 90, negative 90. And then make it uh, sort of angle towards the light, which is there. That looks nice. So uh, now let's get some shadows on here. Shadows, use ray trace shadows. Um, the light angle controls how soft. So I'm going to set this to four. And the shadow rays is the quality. Set this to five. Actually, it's at 16. Uh, that's pretty pretty uh, moderate. And the ray depth limit is how many uh, times the rays can bounce. Uh, if we set this at one, you won't actually be able to see the shadow inside. Um, this material it won't reflect its own shadow, so let's just bump this up. Another thing we might want to do is just select our image-based lighting and under render stats, turn off primary visibility so that we won't see that in the background. Uh, let's take a render and see what we get. Okay, this is what we have. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any shadows. Let's investigate why that is. It would seem that um, we actually made, well, I made the chessboard uh, higher than I wanted to. I actually meant that to be underneath. So minus 0.01 and this way we'll get our uh, shadow and our reflection. There we go. And that's looking nice. Um, we can always adjust the shadow's intensity in post. The thing we actually need to care about is how sharp or soft this shadow is. Uh, I think it's actually pretty good. Um, at the moment, so I'll leave it at four. The quality is pretty good as well. Um, so now let's actually add in our uh, K 
character that we're going to be using. We're not going to be using a chrome sphere. We're going to be using a, a glass man. And here he is. Uh, you can find this guy on Turbo Squid. Just type in man and he should pop up. He's free and he's a great model. So let's uh, get him into position. I've chosen uh, a man because he has lots of nice curves that uh, will be interesting, create some very interesting refraction. So let's just scale him up and I sort of just want him to float. Uh, he can start sort of off the screen a little bit and uh, because the camera sort of comes over this way. And I want him to be want to have some uh, in the After Effect or the A Touch section have some 2D cards uh, in this scene and I want him to stand in front of those and refract those so I'll try and get him in there but make sure he's visible at the start at the same time so let's maybe scale him up okay now I'll just spend a few minutes um, animating this character to sort of give some movement um, which will look really nice with uh, the refraction so bear with me while I do that okay I'm pretty happy with that so I'm just gonna hit three to sort of smooth uh, the man out a little bit, make him a bit uh, smoother, and let's uh, assign a glass material, just mental ray, MIA material X passes, and call this glass, or just using the uh, physical glass preset. Okay, let's put that there, and uh, let's render this and see what it looks like. Okay, that looks nice. Um, you'll notice the character has a sort of a greenish blue tint, and uh, that's caused by uh, under advanced refraction. Uh, we have a color at max distance, and it will become this color uh, at the max distance, which is currently 30, and that will vary on your scene size. Um, this is actually really nice because it gives us um, a sort of bluish shadow, which is cool um, but I don't want the actual character to be blue so what we can do is maybe increase this max distance here to a higher value and see if that uh, still gives us the nice colored shadow but doesn't make our character so blue and uh, yes that looks much better okay what's next I'm just going to experiment with uh, increasing the brightness of this uh, directional light here just to try and emphasize the uh, the shadow a little bit might make it 1.5 uh, we can also control the specular in post I uh, will set that as a render layer in a moment it might make the shadow 3.5 just because we can't really see it as much anymore um, because this material is completely transparent uh, although the character probably does get quite close to the ground there which we'll probably see some much sharper shadows there okay that's looking nice um, now what we need to do is get some caustics into the scene and a way we can do that uh, instead of inefficiently spreading them throughout the entire scene using these uh, directional light we can create a spotlight that has pretty much the exact same uh, rotation so it's coming from the same source but we can really hone it in if we go panels look through selected and sort of focus this only on our character so we're not wasting any photons this is very tight and we don't want to waste any space because photons are expensive Okay, and let's just try and make sure it's coming from the same direction as the directional light. Good, and just scrub through the entire timeline to make sure that we're always, he's always in the shot. Good. 
let's uh, maybe just go to 